the PP. So today for the first session, we have with us the Dr. Swetha Amit from uh, Bangalore. So uh, he will be talking on a very interesting topic of dependent us. So before I hand over the session to Dr. Swetha Amit, so let me briefly uh, tell you about uh, Dr. Swetha Amit. So, Madam received her PhD in electronic engineering from Jalan uh, University of Bangalore in 2018. She did her ME communication systems from RV College of Engineering Bangalore, who has given gold medal in 2008. And she did uh, her BE in 2005. She is presently working as an associate professor in the Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering in MS Maya Institute of Technology, Bangalore. Dr. Sohita, research work is on antenna design, variable and textile antenna, for analysis and reduction in human body, liquid antennas, metamaterials, spectrals, frequency spectral services for optimizing antenna. She has over 35 publications in journals, conferences, and book chapters. She also has uh, patents to her credit. She has been a source person in many FTP seminars and webinars. She also has two ongoing funded projects from AICT, Data to Antenna. She has uh, uh, various consultancy projects in designing antennas, RF microstrip filters. Uh, she also has a YouTube channel linked as Antennas in Play, which is focused on discussing antenna design and optimization in simple ways. She has also won Best Paper Award and Appreciation Awards in many conferences for papers related to spectral antennas. So with this brief introduction, now I uh, invite uh, Swetha Amit to take over the session and I welcome her uh, to this session. So over to you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Thank you for it. So, yeah, today we will talk something about uh, liquid antenna. Why, why should antenna always be in solids? So let's talk something where we'll, I can use a liquid as an antenna. So, uh, sir, I am not given the permission to share the slide. Okay, uh, let me. Uh, uh, Monica, ma'am. Uh, kindly make Madam presenter. Yeah, I am. I request other participants to join as attendees uh, or kindly mute your mic. So some of the participants are seeing their hand as well. Monica, uh, can you mute the mics of other participants? Okay. Either make them attendees or uh, mute the mic. mic. Sir, I'll just log out and log in back. Mira's privacy is not letting me. Uh, it's telling me to rejoin back to make okay. the changes. I'll okay. just log in. Back.
Okay, I presume the yes, screen is visible. Your screen is visible. Yes. Oh. Okay, fine. Sorry for the delay there. Uh, well, the idea on the thought of working on liquid antennas probably started with uh, thinking uh, what all could be an antenna. I mean, it was just a thought, okay, uh, why not? Why should always a metal be an antenna? Probably the idea started two years back when we literally sat and uh, we were just discussing few of with few of our uh, uh, guides and all. Uh, why don't we take any conducting liquid so that it can work as antenna? Because there are a lot of advantages over liquid with metals. We will see that later. So in this complete session, we would be talking about what is the major research ideas, which is right now happening, not much work which has happened, and what is the scope of using a liquid as an antenna for transmitting and receiving signals and everything. So my team at MS Ramaya in Bangalore, it's myself, Dr. Vishwanath sir, and Premna. So we team work most vigorously on the liquid antennas. So basically, Liquid antenna is nothing but a kind of antenna which I use for uh, transmit and receive. Since it's liquid and it can take any shape, any form, so it gets very easy for me to have a very low cost, a very compact size and have a conformability. I mean, I can reshape it to whatever shape, size, shape I want and conformability. And this basically speaks about uh, having uh, using different chemicals to this liquids so that I can change its property as such as a whole. I can change its electrical property. I can even change the physical property because it's liquid. I have the liberty to do whatever I want with it. Unlike a metal. So now I'm comparing completely with a metal antenna. No matter it's a three dimensional antenna, which we see for our GSM communication, or probably it could be a PCB antenna itself. So wherein I do not have the liberty of playing around with the shapes much so i i know if i want a resonant antenna probably i'll go with a um, um, simple patch antenna if i want an ultra wide band i will easily have a, a circular shape if i want multi band or something i'll go for fractals so we know that this is already existing so playing with all these uh, metallic structures uh, somewhere it gave us a stop that you cannot do many things with other things. So that, that's when the thought came, what could be done so that I can play around with the material itself. I can change the chemical composition of it. I can change the complete physical property of it, but yet I can use it efficiently as an antenna to transmit and receive signals. So the thought was, yes, if liquid, the first thing pops out in our mind was can water which is easily available for us uh, can i use that as a conducting material so then thinking more on it uh, came the idea of why not salt water salt water conducts we know that very well uh, well there's a movie also which evidently proves that proves that it conducts well not talking about that uh, yes since salt water conducts so we started the research with uh, uh, how exactly I can use salt water to work as antenna. Advantages, we will see that, but the thought itself was a, a, a bit provoking for us, thinking that, can I use salt water as antenna or not? Because we know it's conduct, it conducts. So we had to check the conductivity, we need to tune many things. So in this complete session, I would be talking about what I have worked on, what my team and worked on, right from the idea till the present date, how did we evolve into proving that yes salt water can work as antenna so then the point went into something else wherein uh, just by changing the size of it i can make it operate at any given frequency right uh, assuming i am using it as a monopole antenna uh, a lambda by four antenna whatever so if i want to use the same liquid probably in a pipe filled with dimensions or something or just a free flow antenna all i need to do is change the length of it 
I know theoretically it says that lambda by four. If I calculate back to the frequency, I would get that uh, uh, frequency of operation. Can I play with the same? Say, can I do the same thing with salt water also? So that was the question. Just by changing the length of the monopole antenna, which is a liquid stream, can it? Can I reconfigure it to any frequency I want? Yes, it's possible. So I need not do anything. I need not have multiple antennas to work on it. All I need to do is just change the water length. It will easily work for many different frequencies also. And then what comes is uh, we talk a lot about uh, yes, when the moment salt water comes in a picture, uh, it's the sea water itself. Yeah. So we rooted slowly to the naval application also, and then thought thought about. Salt water, sea water is abundantly there. Why can't I just use it and make it work as an antenna itself? Yeah. Now the 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 idea of routing it to naval application started basically with the RCS on a ship. Huge number of ships are there in our uh, in so as we see in this slide. Yeah. Existing naval antennas. I mean, n number of antennas for different purpose as all together. So we only thought at least for intership communication or whatever. If I can readily use the sea water which is there, and uh, just not reconfigure it to any frequency I want to work it on, I can also reduce RCS to a great, great extent, to a larger extent. And yes, we can do that since uh, naval ships. Antennas in the na naval ships have large RCS and everything. It, it definitely lacks re lack of reconfigurability because for each dedicated application, each de dedicated thing, we have an antenna as such for it. So each doing its own purpose, either talking to intership or to something else or enter uh, to the base station or whatever you have dedicated antennas for it. What if a single antenna can replace all the above antennas and yet? Um, I can have zero, almost negligible RCS. I can reconfigure because the point is not every communication is happening all the time in 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 anything which we take. So prop. So why can't one antenna do all the work at it? Or if you really have two different uh, kind of applications which is happening on together, fine. I'll use the water stream when I want to transmit. I'll turn it off when I do not want to use it. It's completely seamless. Completely unknown that there is some source which is already there, which is ready to transmit or receive the signal. And then probably, would, how, how do uh, uh, the previous slide also spoke, uh, speaks about uh, uh, adaptive impedance matching? So first thing is, yes, if I use a salt water, can I transmit it or not? We're gonna prove that. Second thing is, how exactly is the impedance matching uh, work done? So if we take a simple PCB uh, patch antenna, we 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 work on a lot of things for impedance matching to happen. We check everything. We do that 50 ohm impedance, S parameters, VSWR. We are checking everything so that whatever antenna I'm uh, integrating it with other devices, there has to be a perfect impedance matching. Do I have to take care of this also? Or can I have a system wherein I can have adaptive impedance matching? So we, we worked on that also. And then something on secure communication. So security basically comes here when we think about uh, having reconfigurability in the frequency. So I will have some modulation techniques or something wherein I can keep switching the frequency without my knowledge itself. So all I need to do is um, uh, automatic automatize it so that the frequency shifts between the transmitter and receiver at both sides. And I have the liberty to have a secure communication because the intruder, by the time he knows what frequency I'm trying to communicate to you, well, switched to another level. So having had so much advantage of using this, yes, there are a lot of advantage with it. So can I use salt water for communication? So first thing what comes is I cannot beat the conductivity of a metal with the compared to a salt water. So what should I do so that uh, I can uh, play with the chemical around it? Add something to salt water so that the conductivity is maintained at least to communicate to a certain distance, N not far distance. Yes, because the conductivity is very less as compared to metal. So, but when we come, when we think about reconfigurable, having reduced radar cross section, so the solution is very nice that if I can have a liquid conducting material and 
since i am talking about naval systems so since uh, all the ships ships are surrounded by water uh, why do i need a metal so that's just a saying that when i already have something which is existing i just have to pull out the sea water there make it work so that i can use it as an antenna why not yeah so that's when the idea of saline based reconfigurable liquid antenna system also came in our thought came in a picture came into research flow uh, maintenance gets very easy if i am using sea water itself saline water yes the uh, i mean i wouldn't have much uh, uh, thinking about uh, how should i take care of it how should i take care of it or not things and all those 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 simple things doesn't come in a picture as in we take care of these uh, um, pcbs which we fabricate and everything and uh, with that so what are the major advantages we will see and then we will go how did we actually design such uh, liquid antenna compact size uh, one more thing which came into the th came into thought when we started using salt water antenna was the conductivity is very 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 poor probably if you compare to metal which is around 10 par 7 something this is in numbers like uh, 20 30 40 50 i mean look at the number there how can i even uh, say that salt water which is having so less conductivity i can map it to something which is already existing yeah but the very fascinating point of uh, the salt water was its dielectric constant is very large very 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 large so any metal which we take the substrate if we take the dielectric constant would be 2.2 4.4 rt deuteroid or fr4 or as such whatever if i am considering the salt water as a dielectric material and i use it as a dielectric resonator antenna the size automatically reduces because in in conventional way probably we will use a monopole lambda by 4 or something here it gets reduced to lambda by root epsilon r so since the conductivity is high the size is automatically reduced i do readily get a compact size and then conform because i can tune it to any shape it's it's liquid so i can have any shape i want depending upon whether i'm sticking on to high gain i'm sticking on to polarization or i'm talking about multi band or i'm talking about wide band uh, yeah multi frequencies it depends on your whatever application it is i can shape the liquid to whatever i want what however i want and reconfigurable as we saw just by changing the height i can change the frequency and yes changing the width of the stream water stream either in a pipe or in a free flow all i can do is control the bandwidth so we just had a simple i mean we started the research with a simple example of having the salt water <coughs> sorry salt water in a pipe so we uh, fm is already there I mean, in our cities fm broad is already broadcasting so what we thought was why don't we try to receive it so the, i i'll explain that part of uh, 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 prototype later so we we came across that as i increase the width of the water stream the bandwidth increased or the frequency coverage increased so that was also a very good thing for us so i can have reconfigurability very easily and yet yes again smaller radar cross sections which we just saw low weight and use it when you want it i mean it's not like the antenna has to stand there always you when you want you use it when you don't want you just have to turn off the uh, power i mean the, no water stream power consumption will definitely be less than it's very simple simple to assemble i mean in a simple way what do i need to construct this also i mean if i'm just not getting into too technical part of it all i need would be a pump which would put out water stream and probably a nozzle to control the width the length of the water pipe and then probably a signal uh, that anyhow in no matter what antenna it is i would definitely need a signal generator or probably some device which which needs to send in the information that leaving that all i need to have is just the pump to pull put, put out the water stream that's all and uh, geomet retuning is simple and you can i mean we worked on manual and then we automatically uh, went it to automatic wherein we programmed it in such a way that given the frequency it will retune it to whatever uh, length it wants so yeah having done all these optimization things we can play around with the data rates the bandwidth yes the gain directivity having array of these liquid streams or whatever 
yeah, polarization and secure communication. The, the, the main focus of what we are doing right now is basically with um, VHF and UHF and all the naval communication uh, frequencies, what they are using. So that we, we literally wanted to have a, a, a feel that it can be used. So we took the application, which is already existing and trying to prove that we can actually replace salt water there to the already existing uh, antennas. So as we see the screen here, uh, it looks it looks like just a fountain, right? No. Yeah, uh, I mean, I can I can just a fountain. I can make it work as an antenna. Probably in uh, um, I mean, application civilian applications. If I have to see if I just walk into a hotel or I just have a fountain, we we always see that, right? So what if this fountain itself is tuned to some frequency and it plays you music, um, or probably in a signal uh, wherein I can just have this fountain kind of thing at the signal and it is trying to receive some signal which is sent by someone at far distance. I mean, it, it looks a bit seamless, wherein unless you know it's an antenna, you wouldn't actually feel that it is working as antenna or it is trying to capture the signal or radiate the signal or whatever. So as you see, all it needs, it, if I'm using it in seawater in, 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 in the beach side or something, all I need is a pump and a nozzle to control my water level. RF cable, transceiver and all, this is just a part of any antenna, which I would definitely need. Yeah. So, and one more very nice application, which we can talk about is in a disaster management as a tsunami or something, wherein everything is washed out, probably my communication is lost and everything. And, and I have a black box there, which will just turn on on its own with a pre uh, uh, power battery or something. And all I need to tsunami is just again the seawater. So I just have to use it and probably like we can use it for communication or something. It could be anything, either the video broadcasting or just find out what is happening there rather than sending in drones or something. Uh, yes, that's another way too. But using salt water, also there is an option to um, check many things. So this is where the work started probably uh, two, three years back wherein we took a CPVC pipe of exactly length. We, we tried to work it out at 100 megahertz, the FM. So calculated back what is lambda by four. We just thought, let's make it work as a simple monopole antenna. So the we played with the length. Uh, sorry, we fixed the frequency, the length was fixed. So we played with width also. We, we right from uh, a quarter inch pipe till half, one one and a half two inch pipe we played around so that we saw if i'm designing for 100 megahertz is it exactly resonant frequency or am i getting uh in in bangalore the fm starts probably at uh, 90 megahertz or goes up to 110 megahertz so if with this single length can i cover the whole bandwidth so we played around that also yes and one more thing is if it is not salt water i mean sea water if I'm using my own salt water, I can play with the chemical composition also. Keep adding salt water and see what's happening. Oh, we found wonderful things there. I mean, something which we wouldn't have expect. If, if you ask me uh, today, uh, I mean, if you ask some person, what happens if you keep adding salt to water? We will say that yes, to some, it will it'll, uh, dilute in water, get soluble. After some level, it gets saturated. Even though you keep adding salt, it will uh, not absorb or it will not uh, get soluble in water. That, that is what we always come upon. Likewise, if I go back to the radiation, so probably what happens is I, I keep adding salt to it, conductivity is increasing. Uh, th there's a chart for that also. It is evidently know that as I keep increasing the salt, conductivity will also increase. So hence what happens probably with the minimum salt, I maybe cover, I was able to cover 10 meters or something. As I kept adding salt to it, conductivity increased, so the distance covered also increased. At some extent, what happens when the salt water is no more soluble, the salt is no more soluble there, um, we might come to a conclusion that the distance covered also gets stabilized. Uh, this is at this moment, that's not happening. Some weird thing happened there, which, I mean, we were actually surprised that how can this so, um, something happened. So I'll come to something uh, later. So simple, what we took, did here was we had our FM uh, receiver box, the old aged transistor, whatever we call, we removed the antenna from it. The, all the other receiver circuit was as it is. We tried to 
get the signal which is there yes even you are in the heart of a city i do not need antenna for it to to listen to fm also so it was working well so we went into a place where in the signal was completely gone we, there was too much noise that's when we added this liquid antenna and tried if there is a reception we we could able to get any reception or not we got it i mean uh, the reception was good and then we framed our own fm station and uh, we sent in music video also and at the receiver we had the uh, receiver with the video streaming and everything we we got that also but the only problem was the distance was not much probably up to 60 70 meters 100 meters is what is the maximum we got so then thought about using lnas and pas at the receiver and transmitter to make it work well so this in this uh, sim it, it it looks very simple we didn't much think about what should be the ground plane as we see the probe there that itself the copper insulated we thought that that can easily work as a ground plane and then again we had an sma connector or you can use you could have used sn type also so depending on what frequency you are going to use the connector goes and then probably using this over the time uh, we came across a lot of other configurations which can also be used like how about me having it in a loop form I mean, like a fountain kind of thing wherein water is getting streamed out and it's falling on the ground so this forms a convex liquid antenna or half wave half loop in in a quarter wavelength thing thing uh, so we tried with this also but one major thing we had to be careful with that structure was uh, the angle with which i'm gonna put it if i'm putting it exactly vertical it would be a monopole antenna if i'm tilting the same and it will fall back uh, that was something which we needed to take care of reason being uh, when i say conductivity in in a water in a, in any antenna when it comes into wireless scenario it's, it's about electric fields and magnetic fields so electric fields yes linear magnetic field if i take the water stream assuming uh, that this is my water stream which is going and coming back is something else if the magnetic field are in clockwise direction and it's falling down and this is an anti clockwise direction they if they the stream is too close to each other it might get cancelled off so angle with which you are, we are going to launch this half loop uh, is something to be taken care of and probably if i think about having uh, a water stream if it is a free flow where will the water stream go it would be from bottom and how will i feed it uh, fountain and yeah i'll i'll come to that when i'm talking about simulation if i'm talking about yeah uh, so if it is a free flow or i'm trying to have uh, the fountain kind of antenna if i'm feeding from bottom where will i give the feed technique also so usually conventionally what we do is antenna if it is like this we always give the port or input at this side so that was a challenge where which came up with the second kind of configuration wherein i can feed it from any other side as long as i maintain the impedance matching also that we will see later so i am feeding the pipe uh yeah uh, i am sitting in the same lab i will get I'll, uh, later i can show you a few configurations also so if i have a pipe i can feed it to the end so that i have a free flow water configuration or whatever and the third one is again retunable with this uh, pipe kind of thing i have to manually do it or you can do it automatic also but only demerit what we came across was the deposition of salt conductivity would change if i leave the salt water inside the pipe for a long time i need to mobilize it make sure that the uh, salt particles haven't settled down uh, that study was also made over the time uh, how long will i can i keep the it in a pipe so that it is the conductivity or the performance of it when it was mobilized is not changed so the timings also was recorded but that was a demerit as long as you are not worried that you, you keep shaking it but if i am talking about real application part i can't do that right so the, the only option which was left out was uh, the free flow of uh, antenna uh, liquid stream if it is a free flow gets very easy for us so in this this is one of the us patent which the third diagram speaks about wherein they have uh, uh, just connected just popped out water stream and connected a current probe across which is 
tapping the field in an indirect way and you are connecting it to a transceiver or something and getting your signal. So the advantages are, yes, the one more thing is location is not much. Uh, you need not mount it uh, in a place wherein I cannot move it in different places. That's not there. I can uh, remove or relocate it wherever I want. Yeah, and if if I'm not using it as an antenna in a disaster management, I can use it as a red ohm itself. Yeah, so uh, few such uh, applications. So then the work started on with using this uh, kind of acrylic pipe where I can see the water stream or something. And uh, since the directivity of salt water was, I mean, uh, 78 up to 81, if I consider uh, Indian Ocean, uh, the con direct dielectric constant, it's exactly up to 78.7, having a conductivity out for four sentences per meter. It's very, very, very less conductivity. So which means to the given salt water or the sea water, I need to add salt to increase the conductivity. Okay. So if I keep adding the um, salt, how will it behave? How will the antenna behave? Will the antenna behave same for different frequencies also? So that was also a catch which we didn't think about when we started the research work. Uh, it, it so happens that since the directivity, uh, sorry, the dielectric constant is huge. So we know that dielectric constant when I'm writing it, it's, it's epsilon dash minus epsilon double dash. This epsilon double dash is the one factor which depends upon frequency, dou by dou f. So, which means this dial something is happening or uh, there is a change in the dielectric uh, constant when I'm talking about the frequency related also. So, when we checked about 100 megahertz, 160 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz also, the uh, since directivity, um, the dielectric constant changed, it had, it didn't behave same, the salt water didn't behave the same way it had behaved in, in the other frequencies. So, that was also a uh, um, a good observation which we came across. So our intention was uh, use a salt or sea water, change the conductivity, make sure you can have good uh, efficiency by having good impedance matching and uh, have an observation that what happens if I keep adding salt to it. I can simply use the antenna as a simple monopole antenna or any kind of antenna, either a helical antenna or whatever it is, or I can also use the salt water as a DRA also. The first major advantages, advantage would be the size would be very compact. As we can see, unlike lambda by 4, the size here would be lambda by root epsilon r. So for 100 megahertz, my lambda by 4 would come somewhere up to 75 centimeters or something. Here it is turned up to be 33.8 centimeters, which is uh, very small, but then again, what would be the shape of it? The DRS have different shape and size. So we are we are still finding out, looking into what all the shapes can I have so that I can get into a best DRA in use. Uh, this slide again speaks about if I'm using it as a DRA, what are all the advantages? So yeah, one thing is liquid antenna doesn't have metal parts. So, um, lossy at high frequency and dissipating energy can be avoided there. Um, since the losses are very less there. And then if I am not using it as a conducting material, use it as a DRA. And I can have a number of, you make it work at different frequency, a number of frequency using the same antenna possible. Uh, bandwidth, you can play around by playing with the width of the strip line, as a width of the streamlined water, what you are going to use. Uh, this was again a different configuration we checked with a good impedance matching circuit at the feeding arm. And I can have a, a ground plane was, after having that FM antenna, what we did, somehow something was not happening. When I kept it on ground, the performance change when I kept it on a metal plate, the performance change, which which made us conclude that the ground plane was missing in that configuration. Or even though I had put a insulation tape, a copper tape around it, didn't work properly as a ground plane. So basically, for a monopole, it's we know that it needs to have an infinite ground plane or whatever. So the next configuration, what we made was um, 
having an infinite ground plane, a, a complete ground plate, wherein I will use the salt water or whatever in, in a container or something, which is now acting in this container why I, am, why I used was now, if I'm using only the container, it will simply act as a DRA. Or if I put it in a water stream level, it will work as a, any other antenna. This is one of the uh, research article which I came across wherein they are working on antenna, uh, which gives me beam steering. A very nice one wherein in the antenna, which is exactly at, at the water pipe, which is in, at between is acting as the antenna and the other things are probably as a reflector or something. So if all the pipes are filled with same length, it will act as an array. If I'm not doing that, if I'm changing the length of it, and feeding it individually, it will act. I mean, this was uh, it's uh, it'll act as a multi frequency antenna. Or, in this, as we can see, in between uh, whatever uh, water we have filled, it's half of the pipe, and to the surrounding four other pipes are completely filled. So, now this is acting as a reflector, the e external one. So, now my beam is, beam is steered to one direction. So, if I start filling water in the other direction, so I can steer my beam to whatever direction I want. So that is a very nice observation, which we can actually try out and make a lot of things with it. So a single antenna with just this configuration, you can beam steer it. You can make it work as a multiple resonant antenna, can make it work as a high gain antenna if I am using it as an array configuration or something. So one such many purpose can be solved. So this is, we having known the advantage of helical antenna, why don't I have it in a very flexible pipe, fill salt water in it and see what's happening. Uh, and since I have the liberty to play around with shapes, many things could be done uh, to do it. All I need is, yes, I would need a signal generator and a spectrum analyzer if we do not have BNA readily available with us. Um, these two, as long as the phase is locked, we can play around with the signal generator and the spectrum analyzer itself to understand the basic level of whether the antenna is working properly or not. Uh, this is one more configuration which we have worked on. So connecting uh, at the sig yeah, transmitter side was a signal generator at the receiver side. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll come to the simulation part in a while. Uh, uh, right now I'm talk talking about what we have practically done. Simulation part I'll come in a while. Mm. <clears throat> At the receiver, we had the spectrum analyzer tuned into same frequencies. So all I needed was a pump which can pump out the water stream level and we automatically control the length of it and everything. Yeah, so this was the first step of uh, experiment. What we started was as I start increasing the salt concentration, uh, what is happening to the conductivity? Yes, as we can see, the conductivity is increasing. So how much can I increase? So after this point, beyond this adding 100 grams of salt in water, in, in the known water level content, so what, how would I, oh, in one liter of water. So basically we started with 35 grams, that was the sea water condition, 33.5 or something. So from there we started, how about taking the sea water itself, adding salt to it, so what kind of salt you add, it also matters, the marine salt or whatever, so that it is not the commercial one what we are using here. So we tried with different kind of salt also. So we saw that the conductivity is increasing. After beyond a point, the conductivity goes stable. So this is my limit is what we understood from that. And we tried with all different configurations. So this to the left, what we see is an acrylic pipe filled with salt water okay and uh, what we see as a stand there itself is acting as a ground plane now um, since the ground plane had to be infinite for the monopole antenna we try, we thought that why have a ground plate why can't i use something like this which not just acts as a stand and also as a ground plane so uh, in line of sight um, i mean even considering the multi path in a line of sight, everywhere in the field also it was tested. Since that we just have a constraint with the huge bulky signal generator and the spectrum analyzer, we couldn't use it. If we have that field box or a, a, a handy device wherein I can 
easily find out the performance of using that handheld VNAs or something, um, probably life would be a bit easier with that. Uh, we tried with the free flow also, having a ground plane there, treating it from the edge and having the controlled nozzle length of the stream, how we want to play and everything. And next comes is, uh, till here it was easy. All we did was a uh, simple layman work of pumping the water to whatever length I want, depending on the configuration. Then again, the performance isn't that good. So where can it go wrong? It can go wrong wherein, in, in the point wherein I'm in introducing the power to the salt, I mean, water stream. The way I'm introducing the uh, power to it, uh, why exactly isn't, is it not matched or maximum power is not getting tra uh, transmitted to the water streamline? What could be the reason? So then the question started about playing around with the probe length. Probe length, probe shapes. Okay, so this probe itself is an antenna, obviously. What, whatever I'm using, the copper uh, wire there itself is an antenna. But then again, when we check, it's, it's definitely not working at my frequency, which is at around 100 megahertz, 160 megahertz this tuned at around two, three gigahertz or something. So having this, so this is the person who is going to introduce power into the water stream. So to make it more optimized, we played with many things. We played with a circular disc as we see here. We played with uh, the conical kind of uh, shape. We play, played with helical kind of probe. Uh, we tried all that, which is giving more optimized impedance matching between the circuit the connector and the antenna itself so this was a very major part which we had to play around since this is when we thought simulation has to come in a picture now because all this while we uh, were like uh, salt sea water is readily available if we have the equipments let, let's do the practical approach itself so since we had to play with so many things a length change we had to change the length and then we had to play with different concentration of salt given they had to check with different frequencies also since the work uh, piled up that's when we thought let's move into simulation but yeah impedance matching was a huge thing which came across here the designing of probe itself was a uh, uh, was a research given to my ug grads uh, wherein they found out all different kind and what is the material you're gonna use that also mattered a lot. If I use a copper wire and keep it for a long time in salt water, you know what's going to happen. So what is the material which we are going to use? Uh, that also, we played around with different metals, aluminium, we took uh, um, all, all different kind of material. Then we ended up with one efficient kind. I'll tell about that in the next chart. So impedance matching was one major thing. And then coming back to the simulation, yes, if it is an acrylic pipe, life gets very easier. Uh, or I can import everything. Add salt water is also there. In, I mean, the tool which I use is HFSS. So everything is there in the library. All I had to do and give an input to it. Far. We got good results also here. So this was designed at around 2.3, 2.5 gigahertz. So minus 11 next parameters was good enough for us. And if I want to use it as a free flow, Somehow I am not getting good results with it, but what we thought was, um, I cannot predict that in simulation, right? If I keep adding salt to the water, I cannot say where are these NaCl ions, the salt water ions are there in it. So same thing if I have to put it in HFSS and try, if assuming that it's, it's uniformly distributed around this water streamline, what we can do is take tiny short dipoles. You have to, we have to design, uh, Oh, sorry, I didn't read. Okay, so what basically had was even uh, in the water stream, I, I can take the water stream in a free flow, but that didn't give me a proper answer. So the right way to do was converting this water stream into ions and then putting back into the simulation wherein probably take those small ions as the very short dipole antennas, which we know. The length of it is lambda less than lambda by 100 or something. So design that have multiple of them in the water stream, water column, which you are planning to do, or the length of it, and then trigger it in such a way that it happens mutually. The power is not now not connected uh, directly to it. it. It should have mutually, and the whole structure should act as one. So that's what is the 
plan we thought of right now and we are still working on how exactly use the free flow water in the simulation also and uh, next coming on to this observation so this is something which uh, really interested us uh, so as we know as we already discussed as i keep adding salt what happens is the distance would the conductivity would increase and the distance covered will also increase and then what happens it should get stabilized or something so that did happen here here what we did, did was we took a 3 4 inch we played with different width of the pipe also right from quarter to till 1 and 1/2 inch pipe so then we concluded that this 3 4 inch pipe gave much more optimized result than all the other so we took that in that pipe and uh, uh, started with a simple ro water which the conductivity was very less in that then we started adding salt to it so vaguely at 70 grams of salt when added to it and we saw the performance it, with respect to the distance covered and all the distance covered abruptly decreased completely went down and we thought it was our mistake we we did the same experiment again and again and again and exactly at 70 grams at um 100 megahertz so the frequency was fixed at 100 megahertz so we when we saw that uh, this was something uh, curious for us how can what made the uh, salt water structure which was working very well as an antenna which covered up to 40 meters there and completely went back to uh, 10 meters or something so this is when the antenna which was now working as conducting material now tuned into its dra into its dielectric resonance so that's when it 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 no more worked as the antenna radiating it, it was absorbing everything into it and then again when we increase the salt concentration beyond 70 grams then again it shooted up to one value and reduced off so uh, at every other frequency this was not the scenario when we worked at 160 megahertz this didn't exist at 70 grams it was working well very fine so that's when we concluded that it's just not uh, act, uh, uh, the dielectric resonance is not only acting but it's acting different in different frequencies also because we know that due to that epsilon r double epsilon double dash and then having known that part we thought let's find out different okay this was the configuration of having different uh, width of the pipe with the same salt concentration 35 grams was taken played around different salt water the width of it because we thought having different width of it will give me different uh, huge bandwidth or frequency coverage or whatever so we played with that to the distance covered also so one thing is if i want to have wide bandwidth i need to compromise with the distance covered yeah so that's what happened here so then you there is a trade off there if you really want Uh, of huge bandwidth you need to be com uh, compromised or have a trade off between the dis distance covered but somehow you can play around with both of them and come into one single value whichever suits the application and this is also one more study which was done with uh, the signal generator and the spectrum analyzer when adding salt to it how exactly the performance changed so as we can see in the plot uh, the 33 gram the uh, as i started increasing 33 gram something happened the uh, the blue line what we are seeing here and then as i started increasing to 50 grams the performance enhanced a lot and then what happened at 60 grams also it was okay when it came back to 90 grams again the performance was as good as what we used in the 30, 33 grams so at all these different frequency we had to check and get to optimized value of what kind of salt concentration should i use for this frequency so that i get better performance so if we have that database i would easily know now if i want to automatize my system just not by increasing or by uh, changing the length of it so that it works i need to play with the salt concentration also yeah so the, those all those things were played around and uh, here now i would like to show or share some videos which uh, we try to use the salt water uh, stream in as an antenna either at the receiver side or at the uh, transmitting side 
or at the board side even if the antenna probe is removed it shouldn't i shouldn't get any output at the spectrum analyzer so all these video which we had done i just want to share with you once we you watch the video and then we will have a discussion about how exactly it was done this is uh, testing the antenna as a receiver so at the transmitter side we have filled the water level as per the quarter wavelength uh, form and at the receiver when nothing is connected so we see a straight line and the moment we connect the antenna to it that is the same uh, salt water antenna in an acrylic pipe so we see that there's a reception or there's a signal which is being captured so this proves that the salt water antenna is working as a receiving antenna so this was one observation which was done without the probe with the probe is it is is antenna valid i mean salt water is it even getting the energy or not the next video this setup was used to check again if the antenna is properly working as a receiving antenna or not so we have connected both salt water antenna at the transmitter and the receiver we can see that the antenna is receiving the signal at 160 megahertz so we now will remove the probe or remove the connection between the spectrum analyzer and the antenna and see if we are getting any reception or not so evidently we shouldn't get any reception so let's see what will happen so the moment we remove the plug so we have no reception here so it's almost negligible i did quite some noise there so which shows antenna was the one which was picking the signal at the peak so this is proving the antenna working at the receiver side so when we come to the transmitting side this setup is to check whether the salt water antenna is working as a transmitting antenna or not so we just saw that at the transmitting antenna at the acrylic pipe there was no water field and hence we are getting no reception here so though the receiving antenna is already ready so now let's start pouring the water in the transmitting antenna and see if the reception here is prominent or not so we can see that we have we have been adding water at the transmitter side and it's increasing here the reception is much much better than in there at all at the transmitting side so this also proves that salt water antenna works as a transmitting antenna very well okay so this was one setup which we used to prove that at the transmitting side there was no antenna attached at all so no reception here so as i started adding salt water so the reception i mean i could receive something at the spectrum analyzer and then we tried playing with the different salt concentration and uh, at that pre frequency and everything yes initial work was done in the lab itself very near to each other and then we went into the field work with uh, no with complete line of sight and no disturbance no multi path and everything the reception was quite good so probably now in the further thing we were trying to work on buy some i mean have a power amplifier or something so definitely the uh, uh, distance covered would enhance if i'm going to do that so this is one setup when when we are try to use the free flow water at both transmit uh, no at the receiver side trying to transmit the signal from a signal generator at 160 megahertz the acrylic pipe holds the salt water so the length of it is lambda by 4 that is quarter wavelength and at the receiver is the spectrum analyzer as we can see here so with no antenna connected to it so we can see that there is no reception or anything appearing on the screen also so this spectrum analyzer is again set at 160 megahertz which is trying to look into any signal which is being transmitted at the safe frequency the moment i connect the antenna to it so here at the receiver we have tried another setup of salt water antenna which is filled in a bucket and the quarter wavelength fountain 
which is there is now acting as an antenna as we can see from the display that we can see a sharp peak at exactly 160 megahertz which evidently says that the antenna is picking up the signal which is being transmitted at by the signal generator and the acrylic pipe water sea salt water antenna which is filled there so it is see a sharp peak which demonstrates that this fountain antenna which is a salt water antenna is working as a uh, radiating or receiving device it, when we remove the setup when we remove the fountain antenna there is no reception received also this again proves that the salt water antenna is working as a receiving element thank you so this this was a very interesting uh, uh, proof for us to tell that yes i can use salt water to transmit and receive signals and uh, yeah if we say we are just transmitting signal and receiving them probably i wouldn't be able to prove it to uh, someone else unless it's an audio or a video transmission and reception so we tried uh, you doing with with sdrs we had uh, software defined radios so we tried to use this remove the antenna which it has uh, it has a monopole antenna where we, we removed that we plugged in our salt water antenna and uh, uh, try to transmit a signal, uh, an audio, and uh, receive it the other end. Yeah. So this this though the setup was very close to each other that that was the initial case then we tried checked it with the two different uh, laptops two different sdr at different distances and uh, tried sending uh, text tried sending audio yes the antenna salt water antenna was picking it so which basically means though the conductivity is very less salt water can work as antenna uh, probably if we i mean this had SDRs had inbuilt uh, LNAs and PAs, so complete uh, so receiver. So the distance covered was also more. So if we want to develop our own, probably we can have uh, LNAs and PAs and uh, try to increase the distance covered with a good impedance matching circuit. Yeah, impedance matching circuit you can uh, design on your own, or the probe design as such can help a lot in finding out uh, the maximum power getting transferred or maximum signal being boosted into the antenna. So this is a patent which we filed. Yes, no work, not much work has happened uh, on this. So it's it's just a start. Many things can be done. If you consider it as a DRA, I can simply put it on my PCB itself. A lot of things, a lot of ideas are there, right from having it as a fountain way or probably using it as a DRA. When it comes to DRA, that's when the work actually starts. Not much work has happened using this liquid with the DRAs. Applications are immense and probably by now I'm sure each one of you have got an uh, application thought in your mind. I can use this here. I can use this there. So um, yeah, if anyone is interested to work on it, we can collaboratively work. We have our uh, center of excellence in antenna in MS Ramaya. So probably mostly working on wearable antennas uh, and liquid antenna also. So uh, yeah, I work on uh, textile antennas also using different kind of uh, probably with the physical uh, structure itself to play around so that I can uh, make sure that SAR reduces efficiently for either um, health monitoring, whatever military applications or whatever. And this probably we can focus into a disaster management or a simple recre recreational purpose or probably for a naval application wherein Joby uh, Pani has straight away use it for communication yeah thank you so much uh thanks a lot so any doubts any discussions we will uh we will have the discussion now thank you so much for listening to me patiently uh, really it was very interesting topic Huh. which you introduced so uh, he was uh, uh, i have learned these uh, about uh, something about liquid antennas we use there but i, I didn't know much about this so after your lecture 
So I I can say that I know something about Argentinas. <laughs> yes, sir. It, it's not difficult. It's not rocket science. Also, A anyone can do it. But it is very interesting, and uh, I think most of the uh, participants might be getting to know that salt water can also be used for these purposes. Yeah, yeah. So there was uh, some uh, few questions posted in the chat during your lecture. If you can refer to those questions. Yeah. Um, how the fountain antenna is simulated? Yeah, as I told you, if it is a free flow antenna, then probably I'll have to look into as a thin dipoles, elliptical. Yeah, many things will come in a picture. If I'm going to simulation and it, it is a free flow, you need to take it, take think of it as a probably short dipoles and try to simulate it. Uh, the software which I use is uh, HFSS version 19 and above. Um, how do you calculate the electric constant of salt? Is we have uh, Keysight has a device wherein you can find out the electric constant of any material, either the solid or a liquid. So that how it tells you the electric constant. How do you measure the conductivity? Is yes, simple lab wherein you have the conductivity meter. Uh, you just keep the probe in it and uh, keep adding salt to it. You will know the salt conductivity of it also. And then salt depo if there is salt deposition, how can we use it for medical implication? No, I am not using the salt water antenna for any medical implications. So it's just the two different work which I'm doing, not combined liquid antenna into medical applications. No. Um, do we have to change the water frequently or is it or it was filled and fixed? Yeah, if I have filled the water in acrylic pipe for a long time, the salt deposits. Yes, I can reuse it again. We have reused it for months. Um, maybe the only thing which we, uh, the performance deteriorated because it evaporated, the water evaporated, left out with the high concentration of salt. So we finally felt that it's better we uh, keep changing the salt water if I really want to have the same kind of performance as it. Yeah, that's why we thought, um, why not have the free flow itself? The acrylic pipe ka thoda janjati hai. Uh, deposition hora and the water is getting evaporated. Uh, thinking of that, free flow would be easy. Yes. Then again, even with free flow, I need to keep preparing the salt water again and again. Depending upon the ek bar agar pata chal gaya to which frequency you know, which is the salt concentration which works on that frequency, good for us. Waha tak we need to make a, a basic study of problem uh, as such. Yeah. A simulation even I'm trying to do on it. I'm also getting stuck with that free flow thing, having that short dipoles, how should I align it, how do I, should I orient it and all. Uh, but with uh, ac acrylic in simulation, we tried a same length. Uh, if I have multiple, I can use it as array. Different length, I got multi band also. Somehow I couldn't capture it at, on, and show it to you. So different kind of uh, lengths, different kind of uh, frequencies it tuned. So that is also one thing which can happen. Uh, the formula to design antenna, no, start with a simple lambda by four, a simple monopole antenna with infinite ground plane, that's all. Then DRS, ka, you, you have your own uh, formulas depending upon uh, the dielectric constant, depending upon the um, dominant mode which you want. So DRS gets a bit complicated. Uh, which is a dielectric, that salt water itself is a dielectric material here. Since the conductivity is very low, if I don't want to use it as a conducting material, if I want to use it as conducting material, it's just lambda by 4. If I don't want to do that because the conductivity is low, you can switch back to other way wherein you can have it in form of uh, uh, dielectric resonant constant because the resonant, dielectric resonant is huge. It's 81 or something. Um, giant meter wave radio telescope can the entire sea water work as receiving antenna to capture? Yes, we can definitely uh, think about it. Probably a huge uh, ground wherein I can have a big uh, um, uh, salt water configuration of whatever frequency we are planning to tune in there uh, can work. Yes, that's a good idea, but then we need a huge space to do that. Mm, having a high amplifiers. Powerful amplifiers, yes, it is possible, I guess. With a good redome so that I do not have this evaporation or something like that, yes. Uh, 
Thank you so much. Uh, this, uh, I think there is one more question which is visible to me. At what you can see, you may the conductivity. Refer to this. At what frequency you may have the conductivity? Okay. Uh, yeah. It depends on what frequency you want to use. We started with FM at 100 megahertz, and then we moved on with uh, the naval application of 160 megahertz or something. And then we tried to do a 2.4 gigahertz also for all the different. Free okay. When I am uh, conductivity, I cannot play with frequency. I do not have the liberty or a device wherein. For this particular frequency, what is the conductivity? For that, we did the reverse engineering. So something like uh, having filled the fix the frequency, having playing with the different salt concentration, find out at which conductivity or at which point of salt concentration are you getting the better performance. Okay. So conductivity to directly relate to frequency. Participants are asking about email ID. Uh, yes, sir. I will put it. And uh, yeah, I uh, not much te to technical part to very simple things um, to tell about me not in per perspective of antenna uh, liquid antenna. Uh, my wish is everyone should like antennas ye dar bait gaye both in a student uh, point of view ki electromagnetics and antennas are very difficult so mera ek uh, youtube channel hai wherein i have tried to teach antenna in a very 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 simple way uh, probably uh, so i will just put in that name also if anyone interests you anyone wants to come and check can that happen also uh, <laughs> It's called antennas on clay. Uh, somehow, uh, sab jaga hota hai na, sir. Somehow students are a bit reluctant ki nahi 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 antenna bahut mushkil hai. Main nahi kar paunga. <laughs> it's general conception has students. Haan. Ye hume manna padega. Nahi nahi ye electromagnetic Maxwell equation hai. Main nahi pad sakta hu. That is true. So, but, but yeah. Friends, yeah uh, you can type your questions in chat if you have any. Or we can unmute you uh, if anyone wants to uh, like, uh, ask a question. Uh, yeah, there is something. Where can we find the fabrication devices for our college to design? Fabrication as in what, ma'am? Is it with respect to liquid antenna or, uh, uh, sir? Or it's just fabricating a PCB itself. Uh, in in our co college, we have the fabrication, the good old photo etching thing. So as you can see here, uh, my lab has that uh, fabrication process and everything. Um, you can get it done outside also. Or all you need is uh, you need to know how to yeah uh, how to use that fabrication tool. Um, if it is liquid antenna, you don't need anything else. All you need is a solder machine or something. PCB ka hai to, yeah, you have that uh, automatic PCB machine. Wo nahi hai to, you can manually do it. It's not much. All you you would need uh, uh, the photo film sheets and some chemicals uh and some screens and you can etch your antenna on pcb also that's easy and uska ek demo i have put it on my channel also the complete fabrication process up you can watch and any doubts you can we can discuss on that places people can fabricate the antenna for the measurement there are several yeah. like yeah chat box is a good place where some participants can interact also Correct, correct. But I think in uh, this particular uh, WebEx, the chat box is not visible to participants. Like uh, this, uh, this comment has been posted to all the panels, but to the participants. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. So there is a suggestion uh, from the, uh, the participant appeal such to the other participants that there are several places uh, where people can fabricate the antennas. For the measurements, there are several institutes where you can measure antennas, such as IIT. This is the suggestion. So participants uh, can note down this also. So I think, ma'am, there is no more question in the chat. So uh, 
uh, sure. the peer participants. You, if you have any quick questions, you can uh, type in the chat box. So otherwise, we'll move towards closing the session. Uh, uh, Monica, is there any question in your chat box? As host? Yes. So I think, yeah, uh, what is this? Yeah, can you repeat? Uh, okay, so this, I think, query is for me. So, uh, dear participants, if I get uh, the material or PPT from the expert speakers, definitely I will share with you. So, the, uh, Earlier PPTs which I have got, I have shared. So I also uh, request, want to request to Madam to share her PPTs so that I can further share with the participants. Sure, sure. I'll do that. I'll mail you, sir. Yes. Uh, water level, the length of it will be depending on your frequency. If you are taking a lambda by four antenna, a monopole antenna, so for a given 100 megahertz, if it is three meter will be my wavelength. So three lambda by four will somewhere come up to 75 centimeters. So it depends, the length depends on what is the frequency you're operating. Yeah. Uh, I think that was the only question. <laughs> and uh, I see someone asked up asking about, uh, they are working on uh, light pollution. Uh, okay. If you can mail me, we can discuss. I don't know much about that. Uh, Dhan Raju, yeah, you please mail me and we'll see if we can uh, discuss anything more about it. Uh, yeah, from which position exactly at the point where the feed line starts and your ground plane is there, and from there the length of the streamline starts. Nothing, any, nothing below it. Uh, I think ma'am, you have uh, answered all the queries. Uh, okay, uh, share your work on flexible FSS. Uh, sure, you please mail me. Uh, I will write to you about the FSS, what I am working on. I think there is no query. There is one. Yes. Can we go to fabrication on antenna? Can we go off fabrication on antenna for terahertz? I think uh, you might be asking about the uh, terahertz application of frequency. Okay, terahertz. Mm. Yeah, we, we started. Well, I am I am not sure about uh, liquid antenna or this is a general question. Can you uh, uh, Joshi? Can you clarify uh, both? What do you want to ask about the liquid uh, antenna and terahertz or can it, this is your general query about the big antenna and terahertz? Uh, yeah, it's general. Okay. Uh, if you have any idea about the application of terahertz, exactly, I think uh, that is the query. No, sir. We designed one such uh, uh, a bow tie antenna at terahertz, but ha, fabrication, it was an RT duroid, so we are still waiting for that substrate to be received. So, no, we have not done any fabrication so far. Um, do they generally, okay, oh, what changes are required to operate the antenna at gigahertz frequency? Uh, you just need to build the antenna so that it works at gigahertz. Probably the size would be a bit compact. If you need a wide band, so for me, the simple way is uh, I go into a circular shape and make a number of slots there or probably use a circular uh, uh, fractal or something to enhance the gain or something or a bandwidth. Uh, using this antenna, can I transmit and receive ECG signals? Yes, 
um, any signal should be possible, no matter. All I'm doing is I'm anyhow converting it to RF signal. So yes, any signal could be transmitted. But the only catch with liquid is since the conductivity is low, the distance covered might be less. Apart from that, I can definitely transmit anything. Does the dielectric constant of water uh, releasing structure okay, have some effect antenna performance? Sorry, I didn't understand the question. Does the dielectric constant of water releasing structures, uh, water releasing structure means the free flow water have some effect, have some effects antenna performance? Uh, yes, the water, the salt water itself is, since it is acting as a dielectric material, dielectric constant definitely have a huge impo impact depending on its frequency now. The dielectric, the dielectric constant might be 81 for one general case, but when I'm going in deep to the particular frequency, the uh, performance is different because dielectric constant, the value of it is now dependent on the frequency also. Though a small value, since the hue value itself is even for FR4 or RT Dura, 2.2 or 4.4, whatever it takes, frequency matter hota hai. But since that the dielectric constant itself is so small, that epsilon double dash will be very, very, very small. So almost negligible ho jata hai. But since in uh, salt water, since the value itself is huge, 81, that epsilon double, the, the that value makes a huge impact. So it changes the performance altogether. Are you using HLN DK kit up to what frequency you can measure the liquid permittivity? We don't have the tool. I had visited the Keysight office itself. So since I had to work till uh, 400, 500 megahertz, I did only till then. I'm not sure what is the frequency limit they had. I'm, I can check and let you know. How can we improve the performance of long distance transmitter? Yeah, as long, um, I mean, for that particular frequency, the best conductivity, which I, uh, the concentration of salt, I can check. Apart from that, if you really want the distance to be increased, probably we can go with amplifiers. That's all we can do. Or have multiple arrays. So like a fountain having same length is nothing but array itself. That can also sh increase the distance or the gain in, in turn. At the interface between water and material holding water, do you have the influence of antenna parameters? No, depends upon what kind of, it should be a completely insulating uh, thing what you will be taking, the pipes or whatever. Then the influence of, there will be no impact of that on antenna performance. <laughs> No more questions, so it's time to thank you once again for your participation in the MTP. So, thank you very much for introducing so interesting topics. So, I think uh, 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 many of the participants might be thinking that oh, this uh, simple water or the sea water can also be used as a yeah. so this will definitely open up new research avenues for uh, uh, many of the beginners or the researchers who are planning to work in this uh, different field. So thank you very much for your time and effort for uh, being part of this FTP. And we will be requesting you for more such sessions in our upcoming events. Definitely, sir. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Thank you so much. So with this, dear participants, uh, I request you uh, to uh, uh, write directly to Ma'am Sveta if you have any more queries. So sure. In contact directly. And can get you... Uh, Doubts clarified. I think now it's time to close the session so that uh, we can start our next session at time. So uh, I will be thanking once again with and all the participants for uh, their cooperation in this uh, particular session. So we'll be now proceeding on today and we'll uh, again uh, start our next session at 12. So thank you very much once again. Uh, we'll be in touch for, for, for the session. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thanks to all the participants also for listening to me patiently. Anything as such doubt, please mail me. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you.